when you pick a procurement level to start with, you can then determine how important and how impactful the purchase is. Some schools report that they start with large purchases, such as purchases over $5,000. Some also say that they start with enterprise only. Some look at everything. My opinion is that everything is too much to look at. Before you implement a change in your purchasing processes, you should begin means of educating your purchasing staff. Contract language is one of the superhero powers that you can develop. Contracts and statements of work give legal departments the ability to fight for accessible ICT. How do we define ICT accessibility? Well, you need to have some kind of policy or statement that the university is aware of related to the purchase of ICT. Here at Michigan State you will see the language is clear. It says the university is committed to providing an accessible, usable, and integrated experience for all people. So forth and so on. These are the kind of statements that you want to have in place so that you can hold people accountable. Also, make the seller responsible. And you see further language from Michigan State. Seller warrants that the web-based EIT products provided under this agreement conform to WCAG 2.0 AA standard. You want to use language and legal information to hold your vendors accountable for the products that you're buying. You need to be able to go back to them and say, if this product is not accessible, you need to fix it. You can also use the team approach. Having a contract is especially important for certain kinds of products. But contracts are complex and require a great deal of intimate knowledge. In an IT environment, you might have someone involved from the network architecture group, security, accessibility, usability, product features, and you may have someone from your legal team to deal with the contract law. It requires a team, and it should not be placed on the DSS office at your institution. You need to make a superhero out of your legal counsel. You need their approval for all this kind of contract language. It is important to thoroughly train buyers at your institution. You're building superheroes out of your buyers. What do buyers need to know? They need to understand exemptions and exceptions. They need to understand what a VPAT is, a voluntary product accessibility template. They need to know if a product is accessible or whether it might need an equally effective plan or whether the software may need testing if there's no documentation. Contact the ICT team for advice, testing, and help. Training materials can be produced for various aspects of the implementation of a purchasing plan. The more professional the materials are, the better. You need a team of communication experts that work with accessibility experts to develop these training materials. Don't ever place the responsibility on one person or one department. This is where DSS comes in. You can be the expert on accessibility that helps the communication expert develop this material. Now some of you may not know anything about developing an equally effective alternative access plan. What you want to do is you want to keep your feet on the ground with providing assistance to the office that is providing the accommodations. 
This is where the DSS office should be concerned. Who else knows how to deliver the goods? This requires sometimes the resources to be engaged, such as hiring, assistant, tutors, readers, and so forth. Writing the EEAAP, which is an equally effective alternative access plan, disability offices may be involved with this, or they may have this responsibility assigned to someone in another department, such as purchasing or IT. However, the disability